names originally. Today we're talking about The Butcher and the Red by Elena Urquhart. This was commissioned by one of my patrons, Morgan R. Thank you for commissioning. And she was kind enough to send me an extra copy that she had. Elena Urquhart is one of the two co-hosts, I think there's two, of Morbid, which apparently is pretty popular. I'm not a podcast girly, so I wouldn't know. And it is a true crime podcast. But just because you run a true crime podcast does not mean that you should write a book about true crime or that you have the ability to write it all. I gave this shit one star. It's gonna be a rant and it's gonna be spoilery, so buckle in. Here's the synopsis. From the chart-topping true crime podcast, podcast, damn it, I can't say it right. True crime podcast, Morbid, a thrilling debut novel from the dueling perspectives of a notorious serial killer and the medical examiner following where his trails of victims leads. Uh, that's a lie. <laughs> it's not a notorious serial killer. That will become clear later. Something dark is lurking in the Louisiana bayou. Oh, it's a gator. No, that's dark and shallow life by Jenny Meyer saying. Sorry, wrong book. Okay. A methodical killer with a penchant for medical exam experimentation is hard at work completing his most harrowing crime yet, taunting the authorities who desperately try to catch up. But forensic pathologist Dr. Ren Mueller is the best there is, armed with an encyclopedic knowledge of historical crimes. Yeah. Um... <laughs> We're gonna complain about that in a minute. And years of experience working in the medical examiner's office, she's never encountered a case she couldn't solve. Until now. Case after case is piling up on Ren's examination table. Not literally on top of each other, like bodies, if that was unclear. And soon she is sucked into an all-consuming cat and mouse chase with a brutal murderer getting more brazen by the day. An addictive read with straight from the more details only an autopsy technician could provide. The Butcher and the Wren promises to ensnare all who enter. Yeah, I was not ensnared or addicted. Um... I was just disappointed. Also, is this implying that she, the author, is an autopsy technician? Is that a thing? Let me know. I don't know anything about this lady. Other than she writes a podcast. Funny story, her co-host also apparently wrote a book, and I'm like, I, I saw it. Like, <laughs> Girls! My cats haven't fought that bad in a while. Damn, sorry. Excuse them. Grounded, both of you. Um, <laughs> what was I saying? So the <laughs> I thought there was a monster in my house for a sick. The serial killer's out to get me! <laughs> So the co-host also wrote a book and I saw the cover of it. I think the the title of it is All Good People Here. I'm like, why does it look familiar? My husband just was like, uh, was suggested that book by a friend and he had downloaded it to his Audible account. I'm like, look at us! We have no idea who these podcasters are, but we're reading their books. Anyways, this video is gonna be full of spoilers if you care. But first, I must do the thing. You all know what's what coming. What? Thank you for being a friend. I can't talk. I can't do the English today. Uh, thank you to my patrons, to those paying my therapy bills. Eric, Jill, Lex, Molly, SJ, and Zachary. Thank you for being a friend. Again, you know, today's... <gasps> I've got coffee on my bookshelf. Today's therapy comes in the form of monster rehab. And to my potato starch Marxists, Aiden, Allison, Anita, Brittany, Caitlin, Carlin, Chris, CJ, Corey, Corwin, Diet God, Ebby, Elise, Eden, Aaron, Gracie, Horror Goose, James, Jen, Jillian, Jules, Kate, Katie O, Quinn, Kylie, Marcella, Laura, Morgan R, who commissioned this video, Morgan W, Moth, Nicole, Paige E, Paige P, Peggy, Ray, Reba, Ren, Sammy, Shannon, Sarah, Sean, Talia, and Writer A. Thank you for being a friend. I appreciate y'all. If you want to join Patreon, the link is down below. You get early access, yada yada. Okay, so we open. Where's the book? Where did I put this shit? So we open and the serial killer's name is Jeremy, which... I'm sorry, that is the least scary name of all time. And he has people in his basement. Shocking. Uh, he's your run-of-the-mill, stereotypical serial killer. A white man who, you know, abused animals and shit as a kid and has uh, parental issues. This book is not making a single lick of commentary on anything. Well, it tried to give lip service to the idea of how, like, kids in trench coats and goths are blamed for crimes they don't commit. And I'm like, why are we having this 
conversation between two characters out of fucking nowhere. This is the stupidest shit. I love how this is blurred by a bunch of people I have literally never heard of before. This is just written by somebody who's read a lot about serial killers and thought, wow, I would like to make a boring book about a serial killer. This is, if this were a movie, people would put it on for Netflix and chill and like pause 20 minutes in, bone, and then never watch the rest. She successfully did that. <laughs> Um, I wish that I had paused this 20 minutes in and not come back to it. Wow. I wish that were me. Oh, to have given this book the Netflix and chill treatment. So he's like, wow, I'm Jeremy. I'm a dick. I'm a serial killer. Nice to meet me. I'm planning on picking up another victim named Emily, who I go to school with. Go me. Then we switch perspectives to Ren. Wait, I just want to tell you though, Jeremy is a piece of shit to his coworker who he's like disgusted by because she's not cute and she's fat. So of course he's like, I'm a typical misogynist and piece of shit serial killer with very little characterization and so he's a dick to her she knows his name I just want to remind you that this woman knows his name she's he, he says weird shit to her this gets ignored later anyway we switch perspectives to Ren the medical examiner right the butcher and the Ren you have a new notification stop do you want to hear no it? I do not thank you we switch perspectives to Ren the medical examiner yada, yada. she's looking at our serial killers victims okay by the way this is set in Louisiana and my family used to live in Baton Rouge and I know because this is like Louisiana trivia they don't have counties in Louisiana they have parishes my dad used to work for Jimmy Swaggart so my my family lived there <laughs> all you former funny kids who watch my channel <laughs> did you just cringe at the name Jimmy Swaggart me too anyway they don't have counties they have parishes which apparently this author does not know because she switched between using county and parish as if Louisiana uses both they don't why she wanted to set this in Louisiana but then not get like basic Louisiana trivia right beats me anyway our girl Ren is like oh I want to catch the serial killer so bad randomly for absolutely no reason and at one point she goes home and she's like man I really don't want to go to my friend's birthday party uh, I really don't want to do that and her husband's like Ugh, babe you can't just not go to your friend's birthday party that's so rude I'm feeling kind of anxious and her husband's like you have to go you definitely can't cancel you just you gotta go so she goes this will be relevant later so she goes they're at a bar for like three seconds then they're at a psychic who tells her a bunch of cryptic shit which obviously I forgot instantly after reading it because I don't care uh, the friends that she meets up with I don't remember how many they were I don't remember their names I don't remember anything about them because there really wasn't anything about them they were just there in passing because the author makes poor storytelling choices <laughs> super stupid. And the publisher, of course, did not care about making a good book because Elena is a popular podcaster. Why make good literature when you can make money? That's this book. That's this book. But these are not the only stupid storytelling choices that I found here. No, no, there are many. Not only does this book have pointless scenes, such as that um and absolutely nothing like new there's no new or exciting take on serial killers here this is every single other book that you've ever read by a white man about white man serial killers like nothing new here she also says stupid stupid shit like the serial killer knows that if he kills prostitutes or any of those on the margins of society that there will be a social justice uprising and that would like be too much attention no wrong that's not enough attention you want to know why right now indigenous women are being murdered by serial killers and they finally caught one of the serial killers but they're not even looking for the bodies of these indigenous women who were murdered like social justice is not a lot of attention I that is false that's just a stupid claim to make people making Instagram stories about trying to get the word out about this shit is not enough attention obviously for actual real life serial killers to stop murdering those on the margins of society that's false so no <clears throat> it should be that way it should be that p enough people are using their voice to say hey that's fucked we have to do something that it prevents the killings of those on the margins of society but it doesn't it's also besides being wrong it's just a lazy fucking book it's a lazy fucking book it does the ready player one thing where instead of creating their own lore the author just relates to you things in the real world in order to bulk up the writing. I counted no less than two instances of details upon details of Silence of the Lambs. What the fuck? And three 
see at least instance of talking about other serial killers that were real in like the real world such as Jeffrey Dahmer. I don't care that the author is a true crime podcaster blogger whatever. I also did not care that Ernest Klein is a huge nerd. So am I. I also like to google serial killers from time to time at 2 a.m. when I can't sleep. I don't know why. It's just a thing I do. I didn't need Ernest Klein to mansplain nerd culture to me. I'm a nerd. I can do that on my own. And I did not need Elena Urquhart to explain serial killers to me. I too have access to Wikipedia. I am not the audience of your podcast. I don't need you to reiterate the same shit to me just because you're saying it means nothing to me. It doesn't serve a purpose here. Make up your own fucking serial killers. Make up your own lore. Like do something creative. I know that's hard. I acknowledge that. I'm not, I'm not being facetious. I know that that's hard, but that's creative writing. Have Ren reading audiobooks in her own time so we can make the connection between her understanding and knowledge of serial killers and her understanding and knowledge of her job. You're writing a book about serial killers, but you didn't think to make up your own lore, even though you're a podcaster who knows a bunch of shit. You use Jeffrey Dahmer and Silence of the Lambs? Come on, missed opportunity. Lazy, boring option. Instantly made me knock down a star. But then, then we get to the twist, right? Oh God, the fucking twist. So Jeremy, who also goes by the name Cal, his name is like Jeremy Calvin or something like that, or maybe it's the other way around. I don't know. He is enrolled apparently in medical school or at least in anatomy class. I don't remember. Apparently for the sole purpose of catching prey. Nothing really matters in this story, okay? Everything ma is made up and the points don't matter. Again, this is another book where this is whose line is it anyway? He's like, oh, my classmate, Emily, I'm gonna kidnap her. And he does. So then he, for some reason, wanted to channel that story, The Most Dangerous Game, where he hunts people. And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna hunt my prey in this plot of land I own in the bayou. Again, remember that, because that's gonna be important. He kills one dude whose lip he had bitten in a prior scene, which, oh man, I will give it to Elena. That actually made me gag. He bit it. He talks about it making a sound. I'll spare you the details. Never mind. It was disgusting. Just thinking about it, I'm like, oh god, oh no. <laughs> and then he kills this other girl. There's three of them. Emily, a guy, and a girl. And who's left living? Emily, the medical student, is the last of his prey. But before the guy and the girl died, they let Emily know that Jeremy also goes by the name of Cal. Okay, so she knows that detail. Yeah? So he catches Emily, stabs her in one of her vertebrae, tr hoping to paralyze her, and he leaves her there and plans to come back because, ew, I'm a serial killer who does fucked up shit. But it turns out he stabbed her in the wrong vertebrae, worst medical student ever. And then he, when he comes back, she had used the body of the dead, uh, the other dead victim, the girl, to offset his electric fence and she escaped. Meanwhile, okay, well not meanwhile, flip to Ren's POV, okay? Ren, the med medical examiner, is running around with the cops a la Temperance Brennan, apparently this is an episode of Bones, and he's, she's using this guy's clues that he leaves to find other victims. And then they come across a body with the bracelet that you assume is Emily's, it has an E on it, right? Except Ren goes, oh, that's my bracelet. And this is supposed to be the moment where you're like, wow, what a twist. But instead you're like, excuse me, what the fuck is wrong with this author? This is terrible writing that makes no fucking sense based on all the context clues you've given us. So what the fuck? Ren is Emily. The medical examiner that has been looking at this two's victims is his former victim who escaped. Okay. So there's been a time jump. Fine. Uh, I typically like those, but it doesn't make any fucking sense here. She knows that he goes by Jeremy and Cal and lives in a bayou and the police years ago when she was a victim were not able to use that information to find him. Huh? Her husband, knowing she escaped a serial killer, saw her anxious about going to a birthday party and said, you can't just miss it, babe. You gotta go. Your wife has PTSD, probably, from a serial killer who she escaped barely and you saw her being anxious and told her to go to a birthday party. You know what that is? That's not a bad husband because the husband doesn't really exist. What it is is bad continuity on behalf of the author. And this shit keeps happening. He obviously figured out that Emily and Ren are the same person. Jeremy, you know, he, he figured it out. Oh, I found Emily. For some reason, she stayed in the same area and didn't move away. I don't remember if this even gets explained as to how he found her. I, I don't recall, but it was certainly not mem memorable if he does. <laughs> if it did get explained. So he's leaving these little clues 
for Ren, who he's still obsessed with, the one that literally got away. And Ren t finally tells her detective who she works with, not a la Bones, because there's no romance there and no chemistry and barely any characterization of the detective. BTW, just think you should know, I am the one that got away. I'm Emily. And knowing that this is a former victim who this serial killer is leaving clues for, he doesn't put security on her house. He doesn't go back over all the case details with her. He doesn't check her house to make sure that this guy isn't able to break in. Doesn't put the word out to the parish or the local parishes saying, hey, we're looking for a guy who used to go to this school. He went by Jeremy and Cal. He owns a large piece of property in the bayou. No, no, none of that happened. Uh, what? And Jeremy Cal does in fact break into her house and goes on this like little speech about how, oh, Ren's husband, Emily's husband didn't shut the windows properly. He just painted them shut. A, a former serial kicked victim's husband didn't lock the windows to their basement? Lies! Lies! No continuity! What is wrong with you? So they finally track down magically where Cal Jeremy lives. Finally, seven years later, able to do it now. And they go to the place and there in his house is Ren slash Emily's wedding ring because again he broke into her house to steal her shit just to fuck with her and there was no security detail on her house and her husband's incompetent because no continuity. So this is just a bad episode of, this is like a filler episode of Bones at this point. Like a late season filler episode. So the detective she works with gets shot by Jeremy's crossbow and then he shoots Jeremy in the abdomen. So Jeremy runs into the bayou forest. They hear more gunshots and Ren goes in to check what's going on and the police are like, oh, he's over there. His dead body's there. He killed himself. Okay. So she, for some reason, still acting in the capacity of medical examiner despite being the victim, goes over, looks at the body and she's like, hey, this isn't him. And he gets away. The end. I wish I was joking. This feels like a fucking joke. This lame ass serial killer who's like, I'm a predator. Gets shot in the abdomen and then just gets away. Book over. Huh? This literally had no point. There was nothing of substance here. This book has the caloric density of a communion wafer. We need to stop giving popular people book deals unless they show their merit. I want actual meritocracy to be employed. Fame for one form of media does not a good writer make. The only people who are going to give this book five stars are those who love Elena and don't actually care what's inside this. They're like, wow, genius, awesome never actually looked at a single page. Or people who fell asleep while reading it and don't want to admit that so they just mark it as a five on Goodreads and move on with their life. God, I wish that were me. Thank you to Morgan for commissioning this video. Thank you all for watching. Fuck this book. Oh my god. Why is this even printed? Why is this an actual thing in existence? This is bad serial killer fanfic. Anyway, I'm just gonna... Bye. Thank you all for watching. Let me know your comments on The Butcher and the Wren below. Let me know if you watch Morbid and if it's a good podcast. Uh, if so, I'll recommend it to my podcast girly friends because it sounds like it's a very popular podcast. Um, the only podcast I've listened to is like that one about the, the rise and fall of Mars Hill, which I have so many thoughts on, but that's like the only one I've, I've ever listened to. So I'm just not a podcast fan. So I don't know anything about this author. I don't know. I couldn't pick her. If I passed her on the street, I would not know her. Like I don't know anything about her um, other than she can't write a book currently. Maybe if she worked on it. Maybe if she had had like beta readers who actually gave a shit. <laughs> anyway, this was shit. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Leave your comments and questions down below. If you want to subscribe, you can. Or if you want to uns uns unsubscribe, uh, you also can do that. That is uh, something that you can do with your free will. <laughs> And if you want to uh, join Patreon, you can. If you want to, oh, Javi Coffee, if you want some of my favorite coffee, there is a uh, discount code down below and I do get a little commission off that. So thanks to Javi for that. God, that shit's delicious. And that is it on my end. Okay, dragging this out for no reason. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.